November 1, 2025, Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. This video is part of the series on instrument mastery. I'm continuing the pedostatic system today and going to talk about the altimeter. The altimeter is a meter for your altitude. Makes sense, right? Like how a thermometer measures your thermo, or how a chronometer measures your chrono, or an odometer measures your odo. Lots of Latin in there. An altimeter is really a barometer, which is a pressure meter. Barrow means pressure. Since the air pressure drops at a predictable rate as you go up due to decreasing air density, we can hook a barometer to a bunch of gears and a needle and convert that pressure into an altitude. If you've watched the video on how the airspeed indicator works, and I hope you did because I believe that's the most important instrument, then you know about how an aneroid inside works. But in case you didn't watch that one, I'm going to explain it here again. And it'll of course reinforce the knowledge that you're going to need for your test anyway. I believe the altimeter is the second most important instrument. While airspeed indicator keeps you flying and in one piece, the altimeter keeps you from running into other things, especially when the visibility is poor. Inside the altimeter is a set of bellows that are sealed with some air. The body of the altimeter is connected to the static port on the aircraft. As the pressure on the altitude uh, static or the bleh, as the pressure on the static port changes due to climbs or descents, those aneroid bellows can expand and contract. This movement is converted to rotation through linkages and gears uh, to spin the needles on the face of the altimeter. Once the pressure inside the aneroid and the pressure in the body of the altimeter are equal, the needles stop spinning. Simple, right? On the face, it looks a lot like a metric clock with numbers going from zero to nine. There are usually three heads. The long skinny hand, uh, like the minute hand, reads hundreds of feet. The shorter fat one, like the hour hand, reads thousands of feet. And then there's a long skinny hand with the uh, inverted triangle around the perimeter and it reads ten thousands. I think that's a bit optimistic in a training aircraft, but it is usually there and it is possible. So by now you might have figured out that the small ticks are 20 feet apart for the hundreds hand. Let's look at a couple of examples that you can try to read the altitude, and I've modeled a whole set of instruments in SOLIDWORKS just for this purpose. 4,000 feet. 5,500. 3,120. 6,250. 121. 1,210. Minus 181. That last one would be pretty uh, rare, but it is certainly possible. So how did you do? Were you able to get them all before I told you the answers? If so, good. If not, bad. So now you know how it works and how to read it but there's more that it can tell you than just your altitude. First off, it obviously tells you if you're going up or down based on whether the needles are moving or not. The altimeter is your primary instrument that you'll be able to determine if you're level or not. That's a test question. If the needles aren't moving, eh, you're level, unless there's something wrong. And I'm gonna get to that in a second. It can also tell you how quickly you're climbing or descending by watching the rate at which the needles are moving. If you start to level off, the needles will move more slowly. You will use the altimeter to decide when to start leveling off after a climb or a descent. The rule of thumb is to start leveling off at 10% of your vertical speed. Now I'm going to cover the vertical speed indicator in its own video, but I need to make mention of it here now for all this to make sense. So if you're climbing at 800 feet a minute and you want to level off at 5,500 feet, then you're going to start to push forward at 5,420, which is 80 feet before your target altitude because 80 is 10% of your 800 foot per minute climb. Now, you'll notice that there's a little knob attached to the window with some numbers on it. This is so that you can adjust the altimeter to the current barometric pressure. 
If you don't, your altitude will be wrong. But how do you know what the current altimeter setting should be? 29.92 inches mercury is standard. 29.92 is standard. 2992 is standard at sea level and at 15 degrees Celsius or 59 Fahrenheit. That is a test question. From the ATIS, AWOS, or phone number, that's how you're going to get the weather and the barometric pressure. So let's actually uh, call one up and see what it is. Oklahoma City, Will Rogers World Airport. Automated weather observation 1352 Zulu. Wind zero five zero at zero five. Visibility one zero. Sky condition scattered one one thousand. Scattered one five thousand. Broken two five thousand. Temperature one niner Celsius. Dew point one six Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero four. Remarks. Density altitude two thousand. Okay, so we'll turn altimeter to the current altimeter setting here in the little window. And if it's correct, the altimeter should read the field elevation here when we're sitting on the ground. In fact, you can easily determine the altimeter setting uh, if it's unavailable at your airport by simply rotating the little knob until the altimeter reads your field elevation. Then you can read the altimeter setting in the window if you're curious. You'll get the current altimeter setting uh, for this flight from the air route traffic control or any other number of ATISs or AWOSs or ASOSs along the route of your flight. And of course, check the ATIS at your destination airport uh, wherever you're, before you land so that you have their most recent altimeter setting. Landing is where you really want to make sure that you got the right setting. You'd hate to be wrong by several hundred feet now, wouldn't you? Aircraft are separated by a minimum of 500 feet uh, based on established cruising altitudes which I'll cover in another video. You'll need accurate altimeter settings to avoid colliding with those other aircraft. And so if you're flying an altimeter setting from your departure airport and the weather has changed while en route, which it has, then you could easily be off by an altitude of 500 feet or more and collide with someone on an IFR altitude. So make sure that you always have the most current altimeter setting for the region you're flying in. Everyone else should have it as well. And as long as everyone else has it, and maintains their altitudes, then there's a far smaller risk of running into someone. Let's talk about malfunctions for a minute. If, when you set your altimeter to the current altimeter setting on the ground, and it indicates a field elevation difference of more than 75 feet, then you should consider it broken and have it serviced. If the static system gets blocked, your altimeter will be affected. It's, the only, uh, it's only connected to the static lines, and so a pitot blockage doesn't affect anything other than the airspeed indicator. The altimeter will freeze uh, with a static system blockage because the pressure surrounding the aneroid can't change. So if you notice a frozen altimeter, when you're certain that you're climbing or descending, then you can suspect a blocked static source, and so switch over to the backup one that's inside the cockpit. Okay, well now, that just about does it for that. There are a few additional things, though, that you're going to need to know for your test, and so I'm going to cover those now. First, there are the types of altitudes. Yes, you heard that right. Just like there are types of airspeed, there are types of altitudes. Altitude, in general, is the distance above a reference plane. Typically, this is mean sea level. That's what the charts and obstacle clearances and things are based on. The indicated altitude is what the altimeter reads. That's all it can do, right? Just like the airspeed indicator. True altitude is your height above sea level, and that's the altitude that we're most concerned with most of the time. Absolute altitude is the altitude above ground level, AGL, AA, absolute altitude, absolute above ground level. Pressure altitude is what's indicated when you set your altimeter to 2992. This is the height above the standard datum plane where the air would be 2992. Lastly, there's my density. My, my density. This is pressure altitude, but corrected for non-standard temperature. If standard temperature exists, then pressure and density altitude are the same. If the temp is higher than standard, then density altitude is also higher. They move together. The aircraft performs according to density altitude, and this is why density altitude is important. 
Density altitude numbers will be given in the AWOS, ASOS, or ATIS. You'll use this for flight planning because the aircraft performs according to density altitude. It doesn't matter if the field elevation is at sea level. If the density altitude is at 3,000 feet, then the aircraft will perform worse on takeoff and climb because the airplane feels density altitude, not any other type. This is why they give you the density altitude figures in the ATIS because you need to plan uh, for your takeoff roll and climb figures. Now, on your test, you're going to need to know how to read an altimeter, possible malfunctions, the types of altitudes, all of which we've covered so far. There's a bit more you're going to need to know, and that's what happens when your altimeter uh, readings, when things aren't standard, and you're going to need to be able to calculate the differences in height as the conditions change. So, by now you should know that standard atmosphere at sea level, 15 degrees and 2992. That will absolutely show up on your test. And you're going to be asked how things differ from it when it's not that. So here we go with that. Every thousand feet is about one inch of mercury, at least down where the mortals fly. The atmosphere can and usually does change during a flight, especially a cross-country one. So if you were to fly from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure while maintaining altitude, your aircraft would actually be flying lower than the altimeter would indicate. Go from high to low, look out below. That's an easy way to remember kind of what happens. And if the reverse happens, then the reverse is also true. The same can be said about temperature. If you fly from an area of high to low temperature, then you need to look out below because your true altitude is lower than the altimeter would indicate. Let's show by example what happens when you fly a trip and don't adjust for the local altimeter setting. You'll be asked to do this on a test. So let's say you fly from Addison, Texas at an elevation of 645 feet and an altimeter setting of 29.87. If you don't change your setting upon arriving at Wiley Post in Oklahoma City with an elevation of 1300 and an altimeter of 2954, how high are you really? Okay, so what's your absolute altitude? Well, since we flew from an area of high to low, the altimeter is lower too, isn't it? But by how much? Well, I told you an inch of mercury was 1,000 feet. The altimeter when we left was 2987, and now our altimeter is lower, so we need a negative number. So we'll take 29.54 minus 2987 to get minus 0.33. Multiply it by 10, and we're 300 feet lower than where we should be. Well, the pattern altitude, PWA uh, 35 right, is 1,000 feet AGL, which is 2300 MSL. But we're coming in 330 feet lower because we didn't adjust our altimeter. So we're actually only 670 feet above the ground instead of the 1,000 feet. What if the altimeter differed by a whole digit and was only 28.87? I'd hope you'd notice the air as you flew beneath the treetops. Now most altimeters cannot compensate for pressures below 28 or above 31. So if your altimeter can't do it, don't fly. Knowing how to calculate these altitude differences is important for a test. Remember that one inch of mercury is a thousand feet. So what's a standard atmosphere? 29.92 inches mercury at sea level and at 15 degrees Celsius. Test question. You should know that by now. And if I ask you what standard pressure at 1,000 elevation would be, you should be able to tell me. 28.92, right? Because it's an inch per 1,000 feet. High to low, look out below. This saying also applies to temperature and pressure, and we really don't want to crash into the, crash into the ground, so make sure that you have and use the correct altimeter settings along your flight. That's about it for altimeters and I hope this helps you on your flying journey. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, and you'll be notified when the next video is out. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.